I'm always looking for new ways to challenge myself creatively. I've been wanting to try out gouache for a long time now. So recently I bought a set of Holbein Artist's Gouache, but I've been hesitant to try them out yet. Let's do it together. Hi there, I'm Janine artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. I'm very familiar with watercolours and acrylic paints that I use most of the time, but I haven't really tried out gouache yet. Gouache paints are kind of somewhere between watercolour and acrylic paints, so I think I would enjoy using them, especially for work in sketchbooks. It's less messy and it's easier to set up than acrylic paints, so I think it would be really good for using it in my sketchbook work. It's more opaque than watercolour, so I think it will probably look quite similar to acrylic paint. I'm going to give them a go and take you along. So these are the gouache paints I bought. They're the Holbein Artist's Gouache. You might have seen the acryla, acryla, I don't know how to pronounce those. Those are acrylic based, but these ones are water soluble, which is what I wanted because I feel like it'll be easier to clean up and they're a little bit more similar to work with like watercolour. So this is the um, 12 colour set, which are just all the basic colours. They have some beautiful sets with all the colours of the seasons and things like that. But I just wanted a basic set to try them. I cut out a scrap piece of watercolour paper, which I thought might fit in here. And then I can keep swatches of all the colours to see what they look like. So there's 12. I'm just going to divide this into equal pieces. I'm not going to bother with a palette at the moment. I'm just going to get them straight from the tube. I've seen people do that. I'm going to apply it thick and also a little bit thinned with water. Very intense. Okay. So you have a cool red in here, a warm red, warm yellow, cool yellow. I'm guessing this counts as a cool green. I oh, know a warm green and a cool green. Warm blue, cool blue. Wow, these are really overflowing. I'm gonna regret that next time I open them. So when you thin them out, they do behave quite similarly to watercolour. Oh, well this one isn't flowing as much. Thank you, permanent yellow deep. Here's a colour I'll never use on its own. Turquoise blue, they call this. I guess it's a little bit turquoisey, but I would think it's more like a cerulean. Ultramarine Deep, which is usually a fairly transparent pigment anyway. These bluer tones are a lot more streaky than the warm colours up here. Black is very opaque, that's good. And I think we all know what white looks like, but... Well, it might be a warmer white, might be a cooler. Ooh, wow, this, this is just oozing out. I have this old plate that I sometimes use for mixing paint on. So I'm just gonna drop and dab that on here. Very nice. So next I think I'm going to just see how they mix together. What mixes I can make with these. Even though I already know I can pretty much make anything, any color. But it'll be nice to try it out. I'm just using an old ceramic plate to where I put out every single colour and I'm just going to play around with them. I always like to do complementary mixes. That's really nice. More red. Maybe I'll add some yellow. Cool yellow. 
That's very nice. I think I'm still using too much water. So used to using watercolor. One thing I really like for mixing greens is a warm yellow. It can be a cool yellow too. And black. I think I probably need to wet these a little bit first so I don't have to use as much water to reconstitute them. It's a very nice green. It's a much more natural green than the greens you get. Let's mix some of this horrendous one in here. Yeah, well, that makes it the horrendous green much better. Let that mix this green and the purple. It hasn't mixed properly yet. Yeah, I think I'm still using too much water, but I do like that it's still a little bit, that it still has a little bit of movement. This colour made here is almost like a Indian red. I already forgot what it was. Ah, it was the green and the red. And then what if I wanted to do some wet in wet? And that works too. This brown. Mix up this green with the brown. I haven't used this blue yet. Let's mix that with some of the other red. The warmer red. They do te uh, dry quite quickly on this palette. I've noticed. Oh, that's very pretty. I have used a lot of that red. If it was more of the blue, I'd probably not like it. Let's try it. Still nice, but I probably wouldn't use it as much. Yeah, that I don't think I would use. This maybe. This is more of an aubergine colour. Let's try mixing that in with the green. Makes a nice greyish tone almost. About more of an orange. Let's use a cooler one. Cooler yellow. The warm red. The red is very intense. Hmm. Yep, yeah, that's a beautiful orange. Let's tone it down a bit with some of the this blue turquoise. I think that we need more red for me. Let's try some of the cooler red in there. I still find it quite tricky to get the texture right because either it's too dry or I'm adding too much water and it starts to get transparent. So I think that will take some getting used to. But you can still basically use it like watercolour. Let's mix some of the white in with a few colours. Let's do the uh, green here. That's lovely. I do like some nice pastel colours. Let's add a bit more of the black. That might have been too much black. Oh yes, that was too much black. It's basically just black. With a hint of green. It's almost like the one I mixed with the red. Some white with this beautiful red colour. I do have a white gouache actually that I sometimes use for when I paint with watercolours. The other white gouache I have, I think, is a Windsor Newton one. Hmm, that's a lovely, cool pink. I do like that. And if I add a little bit of the warmer yellow, I think it had a bit of too much black in it. It's like an ochre, ochre colour. Well, I've not used much of this blue. Let's mix the blue. Brown, maybe? Just brown. Like lighter. Yes. Let's try adding some white. It's a very neutral colour. If you add white, it's a nice warm grey. I also often like to mix a warm brown, like this one. Usually a burnt sienna. What is this one? It is burnt sienna with white to make a nice pink. The consistency of the different colours is quite different. It varies a lot. Yeah. 
pale orange. Well, wait. Add a hint of blue, maybe this one. We'll cool it down a bit. So this blue. That was a lot of blue. But let's see what happens. Oh, that's a really nice greyish blue. I like that. So that was the brown, white and ultramarine. did have a hint of the other blue. I think I can not mention that. And I haven't done a purpley colour mixed with the white. Let's try this one. Very interesting. I do really like the quality so far. They feel very smooth when you apply them to the paper. That's the only way I can describe them really. Lovely. Now I've just got to keep on exploring with them and let you know what I think at the end. I did really enjoy using the gouache, especially in my sketchbook, but there are some things that I'm not so keen on. It rewets very well on the palette, but I do find it quite difficult to get an opaque consistency when I rewet it. It usually ends up being quite transparent then. If I want it quite opaque, I usually have to get it straight from the tube. I also need to use a lot of paint to get an opaque finish. There are a couple of things I discovered with the gouache. I did start off usually with more of a transparent layer and then building up more opaque layers on top. You can see here that um, I was using up what I still had on my palette. Um, so that turned out quite transparent when I re-wet it. And it was quite difficult to get any sort of opaque finish. And then here I think I worked more with fresh gouache from the tube, so that ended up being a lot more um, opaque. I also really enjoyed adding the paint straight from the tube. I think I did that here, and then just moving it around the page with a slightly wet brush. So I definitely want to do more of that. And also the if you get them straight from the tube, the colours are super intense, which I really liked. I also found that you can quite easily add a very interesting texture by just going into the dried paint with a wet brush, so like what I did here, and then it gives these really interesting marks. I did find that only using gouache looked quite flat, so then I um, started adding water-soluble crayons, which give a bit more of an interesting feel to it. Another thing that was quite fun was if I had two colours on the page, re-wetting those and then mixing them together to blend. That was quite fun. The main downside for me is that um, it's very difficult to layer because it re-wets and I really love working in layers. So for that um, I still prefer acrylic paint. So maybe I should try the acrylic gouache. I definitely want to experiment more with um, my gouache paints, especially for work in my sketch. I think it's very handy for that. And I really enjoyed just mixing the colours on the page. You can see they're not any good sketches. They're basically just playing around with the colours. That first colour mixing exercise was probably my favourite out of everything I've done with the gouache so far. If you want to see how I make my colour palettes, if I take a more considered approach, then I did make a video on that, which you can watch if you click up here. Thanks and bye bye!